Hercules was the son of Zeus and all that, and Xena, well, she was the epic warrior princess. Both of these people had a huge fan following of mere mortals, so someone thought, why not get them married and write a comic about it? Well, that's pretty much what this video is about, but there's more to the marriage of Xena and Hercules than what meets the eye. To find out, let's begin. Oh, and you get to see Xena in some objectionable clothing, so take it as a warning or a heads up. I'll leave that up to you. Let's begin. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. In an event that basically broke the ancient internet, Xena and Hercules just went and made it official. They're hitched. What was supposed to be an intimate affair somehow got leaked, cause why not? Paparazzi always finds it. Hercules did not want so much, um, publicity, but Xena claimed that she only told Gabrielle about the wedding. Naturally, jilted lovers and uninvited guests crashed the party, more specifically Ares, who is still hung up on Xena. The man just lost his best enemy. Meanwhile, Iolus and Gabrielle are having a bit of a moment, thinking their adventuring days are done now that their pals are married. But come on, since when does Xena and Hercules do the whole settle down thing? Then things take a turn for the weird. The high priestess, fresh from officiating, decides to plant one on Xena, who reacts by going full laser eyes for a second. Thanks are given, but there remains a lot of tension and weird vibes in the air. Next thing, Xena and Hercules are pegasusing it to a Zeus-loaned love nest on some island paradise. Hercules cracks a joke about Zeus's, um, adventurous love life, proving the apple doesn't fall far from the Olympus. Xena's search through the house finds her a chest that's like a victorious secret for the warrior princess. You know, leather lingerie, etc. And there's more, battle axes and a goblet puffing out pink smoke. Anyway, we learn from the waitresses how the divine guests were a total nightmare. Classic godly ego trips, etc and Gabrielle catches wind of a curse that's been the talk of the town. Apparently, new brides get hit with a homicidal urge and try to kill their hubbies on the wedding night. Basically, Hercules and Xena are about to have a killer honeymoon. The solution seems easy to me, just get hitched outside this cursed hotspot. But no, Hercules and Xena had to go all in, probably thinking they're the ones to break this streak. Gabrielle figures out the wedding was a setup to tackle the curse head on, with Hercules being Mr. Invincible and Xena Miss Unshakable. Then, in a plot twist that no one saw coming, Xena shows up in a getup that screams dominatrix, leaving Hercules totally gobsmacked. He's like, whoa, where'd you get that? And then tries to play it cool, reminding Xena about keeping their desires on a leash. Um, why now? Meanwhile, Joxer was eavesdropping on Ares and the priestess, plotting to take down Hercules. Just when you think Xena's about to go through with the curse, she tries to stick a dagger on sleeping Hercules. And yep, nothing happens. Hercules wakes up to find Xena MIA, only to spot her outside where she was in flames, green flames. So Xena became a bit too panicky and told Hercules to back off because she wasn't in control of her own rage anymore. Interesting to see someone like Xena, a warrior princess who is always in control, lose her cool like this. The whole situation is so bad that even the horses are getting a taste for Hercules. They quite literally try to chomp on him like he's the food at an all-you-can-eat buffet. I mean, these are gods and demigods and a lot of weird stuff is allowed, but seriously, flesh-eating horses? That's new. With a mix of psycho horses and a bit too much vino, Hercules ends up taking a dive off a cliff. But Xena, glowing like a green fireball, isn't satisfied. She has some kind of vendetta and says something about being the voice of vengeance against guys who've done wrong. Hercules, ever the stubborn hero, still wanted to save her from herself. He claws his way back up the cliff and basically tells Xena, if I'm going out, let's make it epic. So they take to the skies, hoping to snuff out the fiery rage. But Xena's still a few sandwiches short of a picnic and decides to drop Hercules from Cloud Nine. 
Turns out, just as Hercules takes a nosedive, Xena's rage quits her, and she goes into full hero mode to save him. They share a moment with a bit of banter about slow rescues and scenic routes at sunrise. Cut to confronting Ares and the Priestess, who reveals that she was, in fact, a fury. But before anyone can digest that, they disappear. Joxer gets hung up on whether the wedding was real. Gabrielle, clearly over the repetition, cuts him off before he can even finish his thought. The big reveal was that the wedding was never legit. No vows were sealed, making the marriage moot, especially since it was all a strategy from the get-go. And just like that, the comic wraps up, leaving readers feeling a bit bait-and-switched. No epic battles, no character growth, just some flashy art and a plot that serves mainly to get Xena into some rather specific attire. And with that, it's comic closed, story over. And yet, I thoroughly enjoyed reading the comic. I believe this is the beauty of stuff like this one. Some love it, some hate it, some love to hate it, but no one can ignore it. Let me know what you thought about it. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.